Secretary of State Gove, the Education Secretary, is certainly an extremely capable performer in Parliament, generally very popular with his own side and pretty unpopular on the Labour side. Michael Gove has got a capacity for <laughs> referring to other members in terms that are elaborate and nominally polite, but which, if reflected upon, will be seen to be pretty damning. <laughs> Now, some people, you know, think he's patronising, you know, but he has got a habit of saying, well, that's a typically acute observation by the Honourable Gentleman. Well, I congratulate the Honourable Gentleman, who certainly brought to my notice a matter of considerable import, even though the matter brought to his notice is as banal a matter as could possibly have been raised at any time that afternoon. Uh, Michael will sort of lavish the person with superficial praise and then proceed to explain why in this particular case, notwithstanding my very real and deep-rooted admiration for the Honourable Gentleman, he does, I think, suffer from the quite notable disadvantage of being wrong. <laughs> Now, on the whole, I think one sort of admires those members, and there are members on both sides who are witty. I would say on the Conservative side, amongst the new members, Jacob Rees-Mogg, who is the son of the recently deceased former editor of the Times, William Rees-Mogg, Jacob Rees-Mogg is a character. I mean, an extraordinary character. He's what you would call, if you're familiar with this term in Britain, a young fogey. He sort of dresses in a very old-fashioned way, often with a waistcoat, and he's always got his handkerchief in his, the right place, and you know, he's very trad in every way, immensely courteous, and Jacob, I think, almost takes the rise out of himself. He's got a habit of getting up and asking questions in a manner that would have been done 50 years ago. Is my right honourable friend aware that it invariably falls to this great party of ours to rescue the country from the ravages of debt and despair which it's been the historic failing of the socialists to deliver to us? You know, that's very much a sort of Jacob Rees-Mogg type question. And, and Jacob is a, an unusual character, but he's a good parliamentarian. And, and actually, although I think the Labour Party regard him as a curious sort of figure who sort of wandered into the house from a different century, and, you know, he, I would say he's not disliked. Not disliked. I mean, what, what is really disliked is people who are very personally nasty. You know, and that's, you know, if you can express yourself with, with a degree of wit, then much else is forgiven. If I may, I'll conclude by saying that our longest serving member in our parliament is Sir Peter Tapsell. But Sir Peter's manner, just so you're, you talk about old fogies or codgers or whatever, I wouldn't dream of making such a disobliging remark about the Honourable Gentleman as a figure of great distinction in the House. But Sir Peter's typical question will be, is my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, aware that in 1955, when I served as personal assistant to Sir Anthony Eden, he advised me then that ad hominem attacks upon the character of one's opponents was invariably counterproductive and would sit down. That's a sort of Sir Peter type question. 